I obviously growing up in Northern Ireland, road racing is like the be all, because you can go and watch road racing, whereas you, you couldn't go and watch. We did go to World Superbikes and stuff at Brands Hatch, but I think like going to the Northwest 200 or going to the Ulster Grand Prix, that was like, you know, superheroes when you were 10 or 12 year old, do you know what I mean? So I think then that's when I, I realized I wanted to race a motorbike, but that's me whether road racing or a British championship. But I think the, the biggest probably thing of when I decided to be a actual racer was when I was about 15 at school or 16 and you decide at school the teacher asked you what you want to be and I said I'm going to be a motorbike racer and she just said don't be stupid boy you have to get a real job <laughs> so uh, two years later I won the first British championship and they asked me back to do a speech but yeah what I was going to say to the pupils was really appropriate so I wasn't allowed back but yeah that was probably the really? yeah about 15 16 I was like when something clicked and I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do this you talk about these things when you're young and nobody really believes that you're you're gonna do it do you so it's sort of nice to stick two fingers up, isn't it, and say, "Look, I've done, I've done this, and I'm getting to do something I love every every day." So now that I have my own child, it's <laughs> I don't think um, I don't think I could do it. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't let Jesse do do what I do. But yeah, my mum and dad were unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Especially my mum, she's so laid back. You, your father, you always expect. Do you know what I mean? You, you, every dad wants a little boy to you know, to be a bike racer and stuff, but. I think, yeah, my mum more so even the support she gave and never made a fuss or you know, all the times in hospital and everything and she never once said, this is not, <laughs> this is not normal behaviour. So, yeah, I think both, I'm, I'm very, very lucky to have two very special parents. The likes of the Dunlop family in Northern Ireland is a massive, massive name. So probably to hang around with William and stuff when I was younger and, and things like that is, um, yeah, I suppose you'd class it as a privilege now he's not here anymore and stuff. but. William had a died in a car crash or something had to happen him otherwise, it probably would have been so much harder to take. But the fact that he died doing what we love doing and, and that is something that we all come to terms with. You know what I mean? It doesn't make it easy, it doesn't mean that you don't cry or you don't get upset. But I think the way it happened is, is the way we expect it to happen. So in our twisted brains, that's something you just you flick that switch and, and you carry on and that's a matter of life, do you know what I mean? And it's it sounds Weird. For anybody normal, it's it's a horrendous thing to even talk about, but it's the only sort of way that our brains can register something and then go and do the exact same thing again. So I know we probably sound like selfish or arrogant or whatever, but that's that's the way we have to deal with it. And I've got a lot of good people around me, you know, like people like Phil Reed's been with me for years, and even when I went to Honda and stuff, he was always there in the background, you know, encouraging me and stuff. And it's him that's helped me do all this again and and stuff like that there, and even. The likes of Christie's to put with me on a day-to-day -day basis with <laughs> the whole ass of. It's a massive undertaking to, to walk away from like, a factory on the team to say, right, we're going to set up a, a private little team again and, and go and beat everybody. And it would have been so easy for us to fall on our face, but I think um, yeah, when you do win, do you know what I mean? It's like every single tooth on the cog you've had an input in, like from painting the bikes to you know everything and then it means so much more and all the lads in the team like they know that I want them all really to be there and they want to be there working for me and stuff so that feeling's far more greater than what you would get walking into a factory team and signing a contract and going this is your job and stuff like that there so I think that's what that's what wills you on and then when it does happen it's an amazing feeling. When I'm a first CT is an amazing amazing feeling and when you want something for that long it's almost like oh I'm actually fit. To, I'm actually fit to do it. So I think for the first part is relief, and then a few days later, somebody will come up and say, "Oh, well done on winning the TT." And you think, "Yeah, fucking hell, I actually won. <laughs> I've won a TT." I mean, that's that's my name on the trophy forever, and no one can ever take that away from me. I think I, if I never win another one, well, I'm not really that bothered. Obviously, I really want to win another one, and I'll do everything I can next year when I go back. But I, I've won one, and I joke for you just saying oh you're not a road racer unless you win a TT so um, and I, I believe that really you know what I mean that's the pinnacle of our sport it's like people want to go to the Olympics or world championships or whatever and the Isle of Man TT is, is what I class as the toughest road race in the world so to win one of them yeah, yeah it feels good now even saying it so